Have you ever felt like you went through a narcissistic relationship and maybe what happened was years ago, right? I'm not talking about a breakup or leaving your narcissistic parents home a few months ago. I'm talking about years. And yet, even though it happened so long ago, it's almost like you are stuck, stuck staring at what happened to you. In fact, it can seem like your brain is pushing pause, rewind, play, rewind, play over and over and over again. So sometimes it's like you just wake up and your body feels an emotion. Maybe it's feeling anger from the past. Maybe it's depression from everything you've gone through. And your body and mind are always communicating. They're like, well, why? Why Why am I feeling this? And your brain kicks on and it's like, oh, let me remind you. Let me remind you of everything you've gone through. So you're, you're focusing again on the narcissist and everything that happened. And what does this do? It fuels the emotion that came up in your body and you're like spinning round and round between the reasons as to why you're feeling what you're feeling and the emotions that just keep coming up in your body. And you wanna stop, right? You want to kind of close the door to the past. You wanna live in the present and create your future, but it's almost like your brain won't let you. Anyone that's feeling that, and anyone that's undergone that, first thing I wanna say is do not blame yourself. This isn't about shaming yourself for where you are or where you're not on your healing journey. It's about helping you to understand why, why this is taking place. Because honestly, when I didn't understand complex PTSD, it's hard to work through something that doesn't make sense to you. It's hard to work through something that you don't fully understand. And that's why I'm making this video. I want you guys to understand the CPTSD part that keeps us stuck. With that in mind, let's get started. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle. I'm a life and relationship coach. I'm also the founder of the Thriver School of Transformation, which is a monthly membership where we meet live on Zoom weekly and we work through the side effects of CPTSD together. Okay, so here's the link for anyone that would like to check it out. So let's start understanding what's going on with the brain after narcissistic abuse, okay? So before you understood what was happening in the relationship, you were focused on you. Your brain was completely focused on you in the sense that you thought that the reason things weren't happening in a healthy way, the reason this person wasn't giving you the love that you deserve, whether it was a significant other or a parent, you thought it was because there was something wrong with you. And so you were focused on you and trying harder and harder and harder to please this person. Changing yourself, yanking your personality inside out, trying to find the secret formula to make them happy and nothing worked. So what happened as a result is that as time went on, it became painful and draining for you to be doing all the work in the relationship and to never get what you needed emotionally spiritually, psychologically, financially from the relationship. So eventually your brain starts realizing that that strategy, because that's what it was. It was a strategy to try to get your needs met. The strategy was to take all of the responsibility and all of the blame and try to find the, the formula to make it right. But your brain starts to realize that that strategy is causing you more pain than pleasure. And our brain is designed not so much to make us happy as much as it is to keep us safe and away from pain. And so your focus flips and that's when you go into the first stage of recovery, which is starting to focus on who was really to blame. And that's the other person that is refusing to give you the love that you deserve. That's refusing to take any responsibility for their action. That's continuing in the manipulation games that they call a relationship. Like that's normal for them. And you start realizing that this is who they are and it has nothing to do with you. And it's, that feels good. It feels good to start to understand that it wasn't that there was something wrong with you. And so your focus is on them. And that's powerful because by putting your focus on them, you started to break free of enmeshment. You started to learn how to not get sucked into their manipulation games, okay? So your brain starts seeing, oh, this new strategy, this new strategy of focusing on the narcissist is empowering me. And it, it is because before focusing on the narcissist, you were stuck in emotions like shame and guilt, disempowering vulnerable emotions. But anger, anger has more energy than shame and guilt, and it can cause you to take action. So this strategy 
that the brain is now shifting into was a positive thing because it's due to that strategy that you were probably able to make some really hard decisions and stand behind them, okay? That anger, that focus on them kept you grounded and it kept you from going, getting sucked back into that trauma bond and you were able to start doing things differently. Many maybe even left the toxic environment. Again, whether it was a toxic family dynamics with parents or siblings or a significant other. But now you're out. And this is, this is the part that I'm really talking about today. Suddenly you're out of all of that and you're still stuck and your mind is still replaying the trauma. And because of that, yes, it has kept you out of the toxic environment, but it has also prevented you from moving forward. Let me know, let me know in the comments below if this resonates with you. And again, the reason this is taking place is because of what happens in the brain due to narcissistic abuse, due to emotional trauma, for whatever reason. The brain rewires as a result of trauma. So now the brain views this strategy of staring at the other person as a positive, okay? It creates a, a positive paired association. This is good for you. It's helped you to stay safe. It's helped you to not get sucked back in. And it also remembers your subconscious mind doesn't forget anything, okay? So your nervous system remembers that when you were focused on you and doing what you wanted to do and trying to be the best person you could be and trying to create the life that you really wanted, it was always met with something painful. So it has a positive paired association with staring at the narcissist and a negative paired association when you want to live your life. And so what can happen is your own nervous system thinks it's helping you by keeping you stuck focusing on the narcissist. And yes, it, again, it has its place. I'm not trying to take that away, but what I am saying, it, it's a temporary solution. It's not a permanent solution that's gonna help you to move forward. So when it comes to learning about complex PTSD, when it comes to learning how to rewire your brain, when it comes to doing the things that are uncomfortable in your body as a result of the conditioning that you've undergone, you will feel resistance. You will experience emotional flashbacks. And if we don't understand those things, we think our body is telling us to not do those things. And in a way it is, but it's telling us to not do those things because in a sense or in a way, our nervous system is still living as if you're still in the relationship with the narcissist and they're still actively in your life. And if they're not, that's horrible because they're not even in your life and they're still keeping you from moving forward. So I wanted to make this video to help you to understand that the next stage is working through the side effects of complex PTSD. Now, not everyone is affected as deep. It's not because some are weaker than other people. No. To me, I think that it's the longer you're in the relationship, and especially if you had um, narcissistic parents and then a long-term narcissistic relationship, that's when the work is a little bit harder. But sometimes I'll see comments in underneath my videos that are like, oh, I, you know, I was in and out and I healed so fast and it can make others feel like, well, what's wrong with me? Well, I want to let you know that the majority of people that talk like that are individuals that probably didn't have narcissistic parents and they were probably out of the relationship within two years, maybe even three max. Yes, anyone that's been in a relationship with a narcissist up to three years is going to have to do some work to kind of overcome the side effects, but it is a whole lot faster. So it's a whole different story if you've been in a long-term a marriage of 10, 15, 20 years, combined with having a narcissistic childhood, that's gonna take a little bit more time. So don't compare yourself to anybody on the healing journey. But if you have been through long-term trauma because of narcissistic abuse, then the next step is to work through the side effects of complex PTSD. And it takes time, but you don't have to do it alone. I put together the Thriver School of Transformation for that reason, so that there is a community of support where we meet live weekly and we talk about different aspects of the healing journey. And it's the weekly consistency that helps our subconscious mind and our brain to get rewired because our brain is rewired by repetition plus emotion. So if you're struggling and you really wanna do the inner work but you're, you're having a hard time, make sure you check us out.